The crew of the carrier Kearsarge goes into action off Midway Island in the Pacific for the return of a hero, Major Gordon Cooper. Helicopters circle the target area as millions around the world follow each agonizing minute during the final hours of the flight of the Faith 7. Here's the landing. In the left center background, you can see the chute as Major Cooper returns to Earth 22 orbits and 34 hours after blast off from Cape Canaveral. Climax to one of the greatest adventures in the short history of space exploration. Recovery efforts proceed like clockwork. Frogmen from the helicopters play their well-rehearsed roles to perfection. Dropped into the sea, they affix flotation gear that would keep the capsule from sinking in case of a leak or a delay in hauling it aboard the carrier. Cooper's flight was flawless until the 19th orbit. Then a light on his capsule panel indicated he was in the atmosphere. He wasn't, but the electrical system was deteriorating. And when it came time for re-entry, he had to line up his capsule, fire his retro rockets to slow his ship, and guide it manually during the tremendous buffeting when it re-entered the atmosphere. Guided by Colonel John Glenn aboard a ship near Japan, the Major landed 7,000 yards from the Kearsarge, right in the old pickle barrel. The capsule door is blown off and Cooper's flight ends, a performance that exceeded the most optimistic predictions. He's helped from the Faith 7 to the cheers of the crew and plaudits around the world. He's obviously fatigued, but recovers quickly from momentary dizziness to walk smartly to sick bay for medical checks. Major Gordon Cooper, spaceman extraordinary. In the ship's hospital, doctors gather data that will prove invaluable in future space flights. The next program, probably the two-man Gemini flights. Cooper makes up for some body dehydration with fruit juice, glasses full. The space flight medical team pronounces Cooper fit and say he withstood prolonged weightlessness exceedingly well. He experienced none of the nausea reported by Russian cosmonauts. A steak dinner is ample proof. The Major comes home to Hawaii, the first American soil he touches since his takeoff from Cape Canaveral. On hand to greet him are his wife Trudy and his two daughters Kamala and Janita. The Major lived at Hickam Field with his parents when a college student and he met his wife at the University of Hawaii. What more appropriate than the traditional Hawaiian welcome from the hands of his wife and daughters. Despite his birth in Oklahoma, Hawaii adopts the major as a native son, and the first of many welcoming parades he faces gets underway. It was pointed out that Major Cooper traveled a greater distance to reach Hawaii than any person in history. After all, 600,000 miles is quite a detour from Florida. A roaring hello and aloha for the Major in Honolulu. Next stop, Cape Canaveral. It's an enthusiastic Haya Gordo. Good work, Coop, that greets the astronaut on his return to the scene of his takeoff. He stepped from the plane holding his wife's hand after the flight from Hawaii. A flight made at slightly slower speeds than the 17,000 miles an hour he hit in space. The people at Cocoa Beach in Cape Canaveral speak for the people of the world as they cheer the nation's newest space hero, the man who captured the imagination of all. orbited almost four times as long as any other American, is known as the quiet one among the other astronauts. He may be quiet, but his reception is noisy, as noisy as the crowd can make it. Then to a news conference where the 36-year-old major tells of napping on the launching pad and several times during the flight, outlines what it's like to witness 23 sunrises in such a short period and says he had no concern when after more than 29 hours of trouble-free flight, his Faith 7 developed electrical difficulties. He displays a nonchalance that's superb. Well, I waited quite a long while for this flight, and I was very impressed with it. I think anybody that goes up on a space flight and says they aren't impressed, there must be something wrong with them. But uh, I was not overly concerned for my safety. I had every confidence that I could get it back flying. Uh, the thing was routine only in that 
that we had checked, checked, and double checked, and all our engineers and uh, all the McDonald people had done a real great job on this capsule, and it was in good shape, and all the systems worked beautifully, and it made it rather a routine flight. It was, it was routine in that respect that it worked just like advertised. The free world stands proud of the great achievement of Major Gordon Cooper, a man who wrote history.